Sunday, everybody. It is a glorious day. After some rains, my garden is really coming to life and everything is beginning to develop in leaps and bounds. I look for the first tomato out of the garden within just a couple of weeks. I have some lovely green ones already on and I have some peppers coming to life. Uh, let's not even talk about the cucumbers because when they come on, they come Come on with a grand abundance. So I'm a very happy camper this morning, having just come in from checking everything out. Uh, the background today uh, that I chose reminds me of our new Tops Guide. I just think that is such a hopeful, positive, forward thinking cover that uh, was chosen to illustrate it this year. Uh, the ladies outstretched arms facing the horizon, ready to embrace whatever comes in the new day. How often we need to have that same spirit and positive attitude as we begin each day's new adventure. Uh, it's a present. We need to open it eagerly and happily and seek out all the joy that we can find in it. Uh, every day is just a new beginning that we have the opportunity to uh, share with each other. Uh, during the past 12 weeks, we've been talking about different new beginnings that we can take. And I shared some thoughts that I had. Uh, last week, I mentioned to some of you that what I was going to begin doing was to eat fresh. And that has been a total pleasure this week. I have uh, been successful in eating fresh food as best I can. Um, every single day for practically every meal. Uh, it, in many ways, uh, is more easy to eat fresh than it is to eat processed foods, I find. Um, it sounds a little bit weird because everybody says, oh, well, you have to go through all the fuss and bother of uh, preparing this food from scratch. Well, that's really not a big deal. Uh, I think a lot of us remember a time in our childhood where we ate things fresh off the vine, so to speak. Uh, one of my favorite memories was eating green apples uh, when I was a child. Um, I also loved to pick berries. My mother didn't like me to pick ber berries very much because I tended to put more in me than in my little bucket that I was supposed to be filling. Uh, but there was something so satisfying about picking them fresh while they were growing. Uh, some of my most wonderful memories with my grandmother uh, involved the picking of green beans and then stringing and snapping the beans as I sat on the front porch in the swing with her and she talked with me. Uh, we chatted about everything during those times and it, she taught me things without letting me know. She was teaching me things and that got me to thinking about what we have covered in these last 12 weeks together as we've talked about various things. Uh, I think the focus for all of us uh, is, as we move forward, on our good health, on wellness. And there are actually several pillars of wellness that one can choose to focus energies on. And we've spent some time on each of these pillars. There are six primary pillars of wellness that we need to identify. And in brief summation, I thought we could just share with each other what these pillars really are. Um, the first pillar is physical wellness. And I think that taking good care of ourselves and checking in with our health care providers goes a long way to make certain that any pending complications that might compromise our health can be avoided uh, or at least treated, modified, uh, helped uh, to eradicate problems before they become major problems as we move forward. Just staying active, just moving more, uh, 
concentrating on the four aspects of physical activity, even uh, remaining flexible, uh, keeping strong, uh, doing the cardio are all wonderfully important and helpful uh, as we move forward with our physical well-being. Uh, it's important that the body in which we live is as healthy and strong as it possibly can be to make sure that we can do what we need to do to continue our independent lives. And for me, that's always been a big thing. I always used to laugh at, at my sons as they grew up and started lives of their own. I said, I want to be the mom and the grandma that you have to wonder where I am, that you won't think that I'm just going to sit home on the stoop and wait for you to call me, that you know that I will stay active and alive and in the world as long as I can. Uh, and we will check in with each other, but I don't expect you to have to care for me, hopefully, for quite some time. Uh, independence is very, very important uh, as an aspect of wellness. Another thing uh, that I find is really, really uh, important when it comes to wellness is our mental wellness. Um, sometimes we struggle with our own state of mind. Uh, there is a poem uh, that is one of my favorites that ends with the line, my own state of mind is the determining key, for I am the person I let myself be. And that's always sort of been a benchmark for me as I have moved forward in my life to make certain that I keep a healthy state of mind and keep looking for the positive in my life. Um, attitude is so important to our success. And sometimes we let stinking thinking sort of get in the way of appreciating the wonderful life that we have. Yes, life has its own challenges and obstacles. It does not always go the way we want it. But if I can wake up on the right side of the dirt, I have reason to celebrate that day. And I have, I feel, an obligation to myself to make the best of the day that has been gifted to me. Uh, how it will unfold, I can't guarantee. But I can approach it with positivity and look for the good that I can find in each day. And sometimes that good is actually uh, involved with my emotional well-being and how I am handling things, what my feelings are. It's so important to acknowledge that we have a right to feel the way we feel about certain things. Um, and a new beginning may be an opportunity to examine those feelings and to see what is behind those feelings. Uh, what can we do to modify? What can we do to enhance and improve our emotions? Uh, can we find outlets of expression other than going to food to handle the feelings which often I am guilty of doing. Uh, I'm the oldest child, and one of the things that I seem to have learned in my lifetime was I don't get to show my feelings. Instead, I stay strong and silent for everybody else and take care of anything and internalize those feelings, which often meant to me that I would eat my way through a crisis. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's something I had to look at really, really hard and start fresh to say, no, I can own these feelings. I can say right now, I, I feel really happy today. Uh, there have been times in my life where I felt really distressed, where I've been really upset about something. And rather than 
acknowledged those feelings. I stuffed them down, but they expressed themselves in other ways. And one of those ways for many, many years was to go to food as a coping mechanism. Uh, in addition, I think that some of us uh, also reach out uh, into our sp spiritual spaces uh, and we gather strength from our faith and our belief system, whatever that is, to help us cope with whatever is going on in our lives. And that's a really healthy, good thing to practice. Uh, we can't fix everything all by ourselves. And sometimes we just need to let go and let a higher power help us through the more difficult times through which we are journeying. Um, I remember a story once that has to do with spirituality uh, that involved my sister, who was the baby of the family, and, and I. Uh, I had lost, uh, I had a dear friend, excuse me, who had lost her son. Uh, and at that time, my two oldest sons were overseas in a conflict. Uh, they were both in the military. And just a few days before she had lost her son, and it was a tragic, unexpected uh, accident that took him from us, um, she had reached out to me and she just wanted to say uh, she was there for me if I needed it when... Uh, I was dealing with my boys being in harm's way. And I told her all, you know, how th thankful I was that she was my friend. And um, then just days later, 48 hours later, her life totally changed. And I went down to be with her uh, when uh, they were putting her son to rest and my sister went with me, and while we were there, uh, I hugged her really tight to me and, and expressed my feelings to her, and we cried some tears and stuff, and, uh, you know, you, you try to say things that were, are supportive and to let the other person know by your actions that you will be there for them and whatever, and uh, when I was leaving, my sister had never seen me this way because when I got outside of the funeral home, I began to cry. And uh, she says to me, she says, I don't know what to do. You're the strong one. You always take care of everybody else. I don't know what to do. And she was trying to pat me uh, and offer condolence and support and stuff, which was wonderful. And I said, honey, you just need to let me cry. That's all you need to do is just let me get it out of my system. Let me express it. Let me acknowledge what I'm feeling. It'll be fine. It really is. Just hold on tight. Uh, and how true that is sometimes that all we need is someone to have our backs in so many different ways when we have to go through something new that we've not had to deal with before. Uh, and that brings me to uh, social and environmental uh, uh, pillars of wellness. You know, the, having that support system around you is so important. And having the courage to move away from the naysayers and the folks that would put you down is critically important. You don't need your self-esteem attacked uh, on a daily basis. You need people who will be honest with you, uh, but who will not try to put you down, who will say, well, maybe you could try this. Maybe this would help. Instead of saying, well, you should have known that was never going to work for you. Just look at it how you do things. It's not ever going to work out. You don't need that person in your life, that naysayer. You need someone who is honest and kind and supportive. And that's why I'm so glad we have our group of TOPS friends to help us. They can be such allies as we go through the different uh, occurrences of our daily lives. We never know when we get up in the morning and our feet hit the ground exactly what's going to happen. Life is subject 
to change without notice. And you need to have people in your life that will help you when the going gets tough and be there for you to support you and who you can give support to in return. And you need to have a safe environment in which you can exist, a safe place, a safe haven. That's the reason our chapter meetings are so important. Here we can go and address issues. We may not have anyone else to share with during the week. Uh, to help us gain perspective and insight on our journeys and how to make our journeys more successful. So in conclusion today, I would just like to simply say, always consider the six pillars of wellness as you go through each day. Take care of your physical and mental well-being, Take care of your spiritual and emotional well-being and take care of your environmental well-being as well, because they are critical to keeping yourself focused in the right direction and maximizing the joy that is available in the present you've been given when your eyes open this morning and your feet hit the floor. So go out there and enjoy your present fully and thoroughly. I will talk to you later. Bye for now.